Hello and welcome to the movie podcast review of The Menu. My name is Daniel. I am one of your hosts today. And joining alongside me is the Iron Chef himself, Anthony. Hello, Anthony. Hello, hello. I was curious, what would your specialty be as an Iron Chef? Like, what would be the dish that, you know what, oh, damn, I'm going up against Anthony. I got to come correct, and I got to make my best. What is it? For you and Shay, I put, I would probably set up the, um, you know, that fish that you have to cut in a certain way. Unless, and if you don't cut it in a certain way, they die, the person who eats it. You know, that, oh. that, that dish would be my dish for you guys. Interesting. I would cut it properly for you, for sure. Thank you. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know why you would, you know, preface it with all the dying, because now I'm like a little like uneasy eating my food, but I, well, I know, totally respect it's my it. restaurant. It's my <laughs> restaurant. Um, I only serve food that might kill you. You know what's interesting with food, and I, you know, I'm fascinated by the world of food. I love cooking shows. I love cooking myself. But what always fascinates me with food is just how easy it is to mess it all up. And like you could undercook something. Chicken is just I I love eating chicken, but my god. You you don't cook it right, you, you like you're dead. Like it is it, like you are yeah. so close to the brink of death all the time with food. And you may someone listening to this may be like, Daniel, how are you cooking your chicken? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just saying, food. It's like it's such a primal thing with us, and it's just amazing how there are so many ways of cooking food that you do it wrong, and it's not going to end well for you. A hundred percent. I I I'm not. Like in terms of food that I cook on a day to day, well, chicken or steak. Like usually, it's the safest of the foods. Right. I don't really explore to the death foods yet. Just for you <laughs> guys, though, foods, I will. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like food can be, a, like a sentence for you if you it don't could, do yeah. it right. It it comes and after watching this movie, it's a it's a interesting interesting menu that's on the plate for a lot of these people that we're going to be talking about soon. But yeah, I love food. I enjoy eating food i don't consider myself a foodie i'm not a particular you know like the pretentious food person i don't go right. and eat little you know those plates where they the couture of foods yeah we're just like here's just a little type of palette for you to yes just to, this to taste, was taken right? at the the right temperature on the right mountain right. with the <laughs> right wind degree i'm like the oh, wind okay. degree yeah um, can Only i just eat some food <laughs> but i always wonder like my palate, is it good enough? Like, how do we right. know if our palates are actually really good? Right. Because you, you, you see on TikTok now, like, every friggin' place you go to is the best food. But then you go to it and you're like, no, that's not really great. Right. And it's like, man, but, your but, palate but is not there yet. It's true. And, and, and it's funny because, you know, as you get older, I think your palate does become more, more refined. And I eat a lot more things now than I did even a couple years ago because – you just, I think it's something just changes within you, or you're just like, you know what? Maybe I would like this. Maybe I will give this a shot. I just had uh, yesterday a five year old aged cheese, and I'm a huge cheese fan. And it's one of those things I'm like, damn, like this is this is weird. This is m milk that has not been that has been aged for five years, and I'm like, why is this okay to eat? How did we figure out this is okay? I know from you and walking through, you know, you know different stores uh where they have fresh parmesan cheese you're always just like i hate walking by this which is so funny because it's such a staple italian italiano cheese yeah right i'm not i'm not a parmesan guy it's a it really it's a very pungent cheese it is yeah but i never like that's not my cheese like I, you know this, people have certain tastes i know as an italian how can you not eat parmigiano reggiano like that's that's your cheese that's in your blood right. but it's just it's that's in, not i something... hope it's not in your blood i hope it's not in your well blood. you know you know, Italians, they have cheeses in their blood, especially that, that model of cheese. But yeah. like, you know, there's cheeses with worms coming out of it. And that's just how it processes. And, and yeah. people eat it that way. And that and apparently it's the greatest thing ever to men. Since sliced bread. And then that yeah, bread is a whole other thing. We'll get into it. Uh, but of course, today, the movie we will be reviewing is The Menu. This is going to be releasing on November 18th by Searchlight Pictures. And I want to say thank you to our friends there for inviting us to watch this movie. This film was also at TIFF. We did not get a chance to watch it. To our dismay, we just was so much going on. But I'm so excited about, uh, to be able to talk about it today. But before we do, as always, you can catch a brand new episode of The Movie Podcast every single Monday 
And watch out throughout the week for our review episodes and our interviews and all the latest movies and series. If you've missed it, if you somehow have been following us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterboxd at the Movie Podcast and did not see that we have a review of Wakanda Forever out, if we have our interview with Lovett Gordonson, uh, Mabel, Karina, and Alex Livnali out from Wakanda Forever, go check that out. We had such a great time talking to them. We were also very lucky to have Charlie Hunnam and the cast of Shantaram on our show. That is an Apple TV Plus show. Uh, we're having a great time with it. We had a great time talking to them. So please go check that out as well. And of course, it is God of War Ragnarok week. We had our spoiler-free review drop uh, last week. Um, time's getting all fuzzy with me, but we had our spoiler-free review drop with our friend Klein Feltz. Uh, we had a great discussion on it. The game is out now for you to play, and we will be doing a spoiler discussion down the road. So look forward to all of that. Um, there's lots to look forward to. We're having a great time here on the movie podcast. Uh, and I do want to say that today's episode of the show is brought to you by Mubi. If you want to see how you could get a whole month free of incredible cinema, stay tuned till later in the show, and you'll be able to hear our ad with them. Also, check out our show notes below. It has the links to our Discord, to our YouTube, uh, and you know that's where you can see the, the link to click and get uh, a whole month free of incredible cinema from Mubi. Anthony, we just hit a huge milestone on YouTube. We just crossed a thousand subscribers right today. Just today, this just happened in the last hour. Um, YouTube's been always one of those things that you know we had a love hate relationship with with using it. We we got a lot bigger numbers on the pod side, which we've been focusing on. How do you feel now to see that number finally cross a thousand? I'm super excited to see it cross even more. But hitting that thousand, <laughs> it's it's that it's that goal that I put myself for. Like I put for myself in terms of I needed to hit a thousand before December yep. or the end of the year. And here we are in November, very close, but we at least hit it. Um, that brings us into a whole nother plateau. And, you know, there's monetization options and a whole bunch of cool things that you get as a YouTube member. Yep. But, you know, I, I have to say thank you to the audience for being part of our show and subscribing and watching the content that we deliver. It's just amazing that people actually care what we say. Yeah, I know it's thing, funny, right? but it's yeah. just like me. You want to listen to me or you want to watch me? <laughs> well, uh, Anthony, no, I don't even want to listen to you. No, I'm I know. kidding. And I, I don't even want to listen to myself. I don't even listen to myself. But <laughs> it's, it's just to nice to see. Head. It's just nice to see. It's like once you hit a thousand, the next thousand and the next thousand just come really quickly. And that's kind of yeah. like, it's just good that what we're doing is the right thing and yeah. what we put in front of us and what's on our plate that we put in on our plate that we're about to eat yes. is uh, satisfying. I think there's going to be a lot of food puns and analogies in this review. Uh, but I also want to say really quickly before we dive into the menu, um, we get to our main, uh, main event, the main meal of the night, the main course. Um, we are doing a giveaway right now for God of War Ragnarok, as well as a bunch of other uh, early screenings. For this very movie, for the menu, for the Fablemans, for Strange Worlds, there's lots of giveaways. The God of War Ragnarok one is on our Twitter, which, of course, twitter.com slash podcast. Go enter that if you want a code for the game. We are giving one away to a lucky winner. Also, if you want to see this movie early, we're doing a giveaway. Head over to our socials so you can enter. But today is all about the menu, our thoughts on the menu. This film is directed by Mark Myloid. It is going to be releasing, like I said, on November 18th. In theaters exclusively, this is where you want to watch it because this is a fun one to watch with the crowd. Um, and it stars Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, Hong Chow, who we saw earlier this year in The Whale. She's phenomenal in both films. Janet McTeer, Judith Light, Reed Burney, uh, Paul Adelstein, Amy Carrero, Arturo Castro, Mark St. Cyr, Rob Yang, and John Leguizamo. Uh, who we are big fans of on the show. And I'm going to give you a quick synopsis, and I'm going to kick it over to Anthony for first reaction, since we are without Shabazz today. If you did not notice somehow that there's only two. He was uh, on the menu. Oh, shoot. He was on the menu. <laughs> Bones and all. Uh, the couple travels to a coastal island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. Now, Anthony, we didn't know much going into this movie. We're going to stay spoiler-free here, obviously. But give us your first reactions to the menu. So this was a film that uh, premiered at TIFF, and we didn't have the we didn't I guess depending based on our schedule we couldn't go watch it, and um, I'm kind of regretting it now seeing after seeing it because I really really enjoyed this film. This is uh, 
this was a, a unique film. This is something that I haven't, I didn't expect to see. I did watch the trailer, uh, but it's an experience. It's a, it's a dining experience like no other, <laughs> where everything is on the table in this case. Uh, you, you're introduced to characters that, you know, this is one of those movies where you, their characters are, they don't know each other, but they're somehow connected. It, they bring, they're brought on this boat to this dining experience by this chef, uh, Salwick. Yes, chef name? Salwick. Salwick, yeah. who's this prominent or Slowick, chef. Slowick, Slowick, Slowick. Slowick, Slowick. Yeah. Chef Slowick, who's this prominent chef, and he's going, he's creating the most godlike experience of food that you'll ever experience. Right. So the people that are coming to this thing are like the one percenters. You have like the the movie star, the the billionaire. The the Wall the, Street bros. The Wall Street you know? bros. Um, and then you even have like the foodies that will spend whatever. The critics, Kind of yeah. like a twist of like the, 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 the Swifties, which, you know, that, that, that obsession with something. Right. This guy is just obsessed with food. They bring them all into this experience where Ralph Fine will creates this, this menu that is starts off like like an you know like oh cool this is like a I think this is like chef's table you have you know oysters on rocks and flowers picked beautifully and put on a display that's like no other and then slowly and not slowly i'm gonna say within the next 30 minutes from the beginning of this film you know what this movie is about and it goes off to the extremes of what i didn't even expect this movie to be I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed everyone's part in this this film. Um, Anna Taylor Joy, uh, Ralph Fiennes, um, Nicholas Holt is great in it. Nicholas too, Holt, you know? who who plays this, he, I'm going to say he plays the foodie, and yeah. I Obsessed, watched him in The yeah. Great, and he's an asshole in The Great, and he plays a great asshole, and he plays a great asshole in this movie, and uh, he's not supposed to be, or he he's so obsessed with what he's trying to do, he becomes yeah. this asshole, and yeah, but I but I also so think well. he's so he's so desensitized to the world of what he's around, and he's so in love with what Ray Fine's character, uh, Chef uh, Slowick, does that even the most extreme things he is so devoted to him still. And again, you can take a lot of allegories and and par- um, like parables from this film of about like society and, 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 you know, reflecting a mirror back to us. But it, it's so funny when you see that. And, you know, there's a lot of people in the news that no matter what bad they do, you'll always have somebody who's there trying to defend it, trying to make it make sense. Does it, or it doesn't even matter to them. They're just so in awe of the genius of what the chef does that they're going to follow him blindly. And that's exactly what Nicholas Holt is in this. Yeah. And the, the script for this is so witty and clever. It's um, directed by Mark Myloid, who also directed a lot of succession, a lot of like entourage. And you can clearly see that, especially the succession part in this story. And if I were to compare it to anything, it's like chef's table meets hereditary <laughs> succession like that's that's the vibe i was getting right and, and it, it's it's crazy to think that this all happens within an hour and 45 what, minutes 45 minutes and from beginning to end you you i guess like the audience and this is how i looked at it i'm like man i love food so much and they're showcasing all this food yeah and then you're kind of like pushed into this story like oh it's it's not just about food it's about right. more than that and then we're like holy shit that's you grab me on the food and now you grab me on this. Right. From beginning to the end, you're just hooked. Totally. You really are. You really you are. Totally are hooked. And it, it's one of those things that, you know, when, when we left, I remember telling you, I'm like, this movie made me feel the exact opposite as Chef. And it, but it's funny because do, both those films deal with like an obsession about doing what you love and creating amazing food. And both these movies succeed at that, where Chef does it in a very loving way. This is the other side of the coin where this is where obsession drives you mad and it, and, it, and it drives you to just this perfection that is not achievable. And I think, you know, Ray Fowndes is, is, is so fun to watch in this. And if I had to pair this movie with any other film, it would be Whiplash. And, you know, Whiplash, again, it's one of those films that, you know, we, we bring it up often on the movie podcast. But you see J.K. Simmons' character in that film and you see Ray Fiennes in this film. And you see the similarities of their art drives them mad. 
And I think this movie does such an incredible job of showcasing that, but also giving you an understanding of where he comes from and the entire chef team there. It, this movie takes you on a ride. And it's the best way I could put it is go into this knowing as little as possible. Again, we're staying spoiler right. free here. But there are so many things in this film that just make you feel unsettled. It gives me a little bit of a Jordan Peele vibe as well, too, where it feels like there is something like here's something, you know, but we're, we're really going to make it uncomfortable. And we're also going to kind of comment on the larger you know, side of what, you know, where our world is today. Um, the claps with every entree that they bring out and, and, you know, and there's text on screen saying, yo, you know, main course, uh, second course, third course, and it, it breaks it down. This film has such a style to it, which I really love. And it's just so like, just like you said, it's so witty. It's so wickedly smart. And I just love how like twisted it is as, as you know, as we like, I want to say, is, you know, it's deliciously twisted because it's just, you love what he's doing. And it's he's doing such messed up things, but you also like watching it. So I'm also just like, damn, like this movie, I feel like it's it's like kind of pointing at me right now because it's like, yeah, you yeah. you you love this. You love the spectacle of it. And you're also watching it. That's why it kind of remind me like a Jordan Peele. Spect- you know, it's, it's it has all those, but it's a it's a stat cast. I mean, I mean, Anna Taylor Joy, who is always fantastic. She she's great in this. Nicholas Holt, as we as we spoke about uh, Hung Chow, who's is really fun to watch in this. Um, and you know, it, it's almost like a murder mystery in the sense where you have all these different characters who, like you said, Anthony are connected a little bit, not really, but you kind of see how like they all start playing with one another and you just want to see, you just want to peel back the layers of this onion and see what's going on here. Like what's happening. Like I, I want to know, and you just want to get it and you just want to keep watching it. And I had such a smile on my face throughout this entire film. It's one of those movies where you are smiling and then all of a sudden you're in shock. And yeah. then you're smiling again, and then you're in shock. It's it's that clap that you mentioned cuts like a knife. There are yeah. because because Mark does such a great job of slowly bringing you in. The claps get louder and louder and more precise. Yeah. And there's one point where I almost like it was almost like a jump scare because it was so sudden that I'm they're like, precise. Oh. There's a precision yes. to those claps that just keep you on edge the entire time. Yes, and it, everyone in his we'll say his team and it kind of plays out like they're like a cult. They're devoted to him, right? Like they are like, he is, he is their God and they see things through to the, like to the, to, they'll see things through the end with him, right? To the extremes. That's for sure. But one thing that I learned is never go on an Island where they're serving food. <laughs> I will never be but on, that's a, on vacations a the, though. But no, well, okay, man, from what I've learned from this movie is never go on an Island in the United States to get food <laughs> because clearly it's, it's not on the up and up for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, honestly, like you're, you're watching this and I think this is, this is one of the great surprises of 2022, this film. I mean, what a, what an incredible year of movies that we've been getting, but like you have something like this. I think this is this, the menu is one of those films that it reminds me of your new favorite movie. Like this is going to be that movie now that I tell people to watch when people are like, oh, I want a movie recommendation, I'm like, try the menu. Give the menu a shot. I think people will really enjoy it. They're really going to go on, the, go on the ride with it. And now having watched it, I'm really excited to watch it again. I want a second helping of the menu. That's how much yeah. that's how much I loved it because I want to go back and I want to think about like I want to like I want my palates to already be known to it. I want to go back and like think about what I saw and know, now that you kind of know where things play out, you want to look for little things throughout. But little hints, little, little hints throughout. You know, I'm getting little hints of uh, foreshadowing. <laughs> no, but like, you know, but but this film does a great job of that. Right. And I think when you're when you're looking at something that deals with, you know, that's very much a reflection of the world that we're in today with, you know, blindly following people, always making excuses for them, but also the state of criticism. You know, we have a show. We're critiquing this movie right now, but we're not we don't consider ourselves movie critics. You know, we we love movies. We love talking about them. But it's also it's, it's also interesting that this movie also is, you know, talking directly to you know, what a lot of criticism can be sometimes where it just feels very disconnected from the actual art piece itself, right? And I 100%. thought that was smart that, that that this movie touched on that and, you know, was kind of poking not so much fun at it, but also just, you know, holding a mirror up to it and being like, what are we actually talking about here, right? And you're right, Daniel. I don't really consider myself a film critic. I love movies. I'm never in the sense of, you know, I'm never going to write a, uh, a whole page on why this movie is great or not. But um, 
yeah, there is a point where you as the audience and the irony from it is like, oh, are you talking to me? And yeah. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're talking to me. And that's, <laughs> right. and that is what it is. But it's funny. It's, there's a lot of little hidden messages and hidden gems that the audience will probably pick up and uh, kind of have self-reflections about. Yeah. Especially for the service industry. Cause this, you know, if you're a chef, if you're a waiter, if you, you know, part of the kitchen staff, go watch this film. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. You will enjoy it. This I is kind of so. like your rena- your, your Mona Lisa of movies for <laughs> that industry. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's so true though. And, and like I said, it's, that's why it reminded me a lot of whiplash where it's like me as, as a musician myself as someone who grew up playing music, having overbearing music teachers, you saw a lot of yourself in those characters. And I think for, you know, people in the service industry, people who come from working in kitchen stuff, they'll see a lot of similarities in that too. Right. And I, and I think it's, it's really fun to see that. What I also want to commend is, you know, there's a huge cast in this as, you know, dinner guests at the restaurants. Um, I was very interested in everyone's story as well, too, which is really cool that like you wanted to learn more about each table and what's going on as it's starting to unfold. It's all, you know, it's very elegantly kind of revealed who these people are, what kind of people they are over the course of, you know, the how many courses are in this movie. But over the course a of the film. Tortilla shell. Let's, you know, let's say it's a tortilla shell. You know, that the really tor- the tortilla it. shell is like it, it's you'll know when you watch this movie. Um, that you're like, okay, here we go. Like, this is where things are really starting to change and you start to get uncomfortable, but it's a, such a fun watch. And I, I had such a blast with it. And I, you know, I, I loved all the, you know, seeing Judith Light as well too, who I just was a huge fan of growing up from Who's the Boss. Um, and she was also just in one of the, Amer- the um, oh, I forget which one. Was it Johnny, Johnny Versace? Was she in that one? I'm going to, I'm going to find, don't, I, don't I forget remember. which one she was in. But uh, she she's so good, and and seeing her in this um in this film again was just like damn, like you're so good. I I hope you do more. You 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 usually see her on TV, so you don't really see her in films like this, right? You know, with a stack cast like this, usually yeah, it's like the, it was Johnny Versace. She was in Johnny Versace. Yeah, so she was she was in uh she was in that, which was a great series. But um yeah, she's she's great in this, and like we said, you know, Ray Fiennes is is fantastic. Anya Taylor Joy is so fun to watch, and Nicholas Holtz, you're just like this guy. Like, you you play it so well. No matter what's going on, he's just like, oh yeah, I'm just so infatuated, taking and pictures, obsessed, you know, <laughs> using his phone, you know, just like yeah. we do, right? We we always take pictures when, but we it's do. like this obsession. Um, but like I gotta say that the food that is presented to us, and if you are a foodie and you're gonna go watch this, thinking this is all about food. Um, there are great shots of food. The plate setup for a lot of these items that are on the menu are beautiful. Yeah. And there's a lot of like, you know, very similar to Chef's Table that you would see on Netflix where they'll have the plate and it's beautifully set up and choreographed with this camera zooming in. Oh, yeah. The the smoky clouds like, and whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All shot and it has a little description of what it is and what's inside. They're very, very well played in that yeah. sense because there is a very love of food. Very meticulous that way, right? Oh, there is. Very 100%. meticulous. Yeah. There's a love of food in this movie. Uh, it's just not the most, the, the main thing about it. Right. And, and and that's that's what's so funny, right? Where it's like, that's like this movie would pair great with Whiplash, but also I'd love to watch like this and Chef back to back just to see how they play together because yeah. they are so similar, but they are so different. And you'll understand once you watch it again, this is more of like a, of a thriller but the way obsession, I think I come, keep coming back to, the way obsession could take over an art form, you see it in both of these films. Um, so well done. Not so It wasn't well overcooked. You, it was well done. You will leave the theater hungry for sure. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I'm yeah. starving right now. Like, I haven't eaten since you watched <laughs> it yet, so I'm like, I need to go get some food. But, Anthony, let's get to our final recommendations. I'm going to get you to start us off. This is a watch it for me. This is 100% a watch. I think... It, Pretty much all audiences can go watch this film because it's so unexpected, and I think everyone likes food. Yes, and I hope everyone so. Everyone likes drama, so when you put those two to two, two and two together to the extremes, you're gonna get the menu. And I think the menu does a fanta- fantastic job creating this story around a dining experience like no other. I love it. I love you know this is this is an easy watch it for me or an eat it if you want to say eat I, it. I, I yes, think this is uh, 
this is such a smart movie. It's so delicious to just to the whole way, the whole way through. I'm like, I want more of this. Keep bringing out more courses. I don't want this movie to end. Um, I love that this movie is an hour and about 45 minutes long. It is a perfect length. Everything about the menu feels curated to perfection. And I just had such a fun time watching it. And I implore you all go check it out. This is going to be on one of the list, the year's best lists. Um, such a damn fun time. Thank you so much for listening to the movie podcast review of The Menu. This film is going to be releasing in theaters on November 18th, and we are doing a giveaway right now if you want to go see it early. I want to say thank you to our friends at Searchlight Pictures for inviting us to watch this film for review as well. Uh, like I said at the top of the show, and as you heard in the middle, today's episode of the movie podcast is brought to you by Mubi. If you want to get a whole month free of incredible cinema, deliciously curated for you make sure you check out our show notes below click on that link and sign up you won't regret it uh this now is the time to watch it we're going into you know a great time of the year this is the time that you want to be you know snuggled up inside watching some good movies and that is what movie is all about um anthony thank you so much again for for joining us on the movie podcast today i'm going to thank myself for joining us on the movie podcast today um as always we have a brand new episode of our show every single monday watch out throughout the rest of the week for our reviews and our interviews and all the latest movies and series we have so many incredible episodes out right now and make sure you, you go support us on instagram twitter tiktok and letterbox subscribe to us on youtube we are over a thousand strong now which is a huge milestone for us. So thank you so much for that. That was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you next.